The sinister reason companies are going woke, and it's not what you think. Now, when Bud Light made headlines for turning against their primary customer base, costing them billions in market valuation from plummeting sales, many people thought it was a huge mistake, a blunder. Some, you know, lower level marketing team made uh, some mistake there, but then other companies started following suit. Target went hard for the kids, then North Face, now Chick-fil-A. So what is going on? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain what's really behind these companies about face. And you would be surprised. It's not about the money. They don't care if they lose money. So your boycotts, don't really work. We're going to look at who is pushing them, how they control the corporations we shop at, and of course, how we can turn the tide and stop being a victim and go build the world that we want. So let's go. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss. Of course, I make these videos to change the way you think about money because it's hard to understand what the heck it is and how it's being used in all areas of society. Yes, even as a weapon to force ideologies upon you. And so we're going to break all that down now. Uh, heaven forbid something were to happen to me on YouTube, even though maybe they're opening up their channel a little bit. I'd hate to lose touch with you. I have a free Sovereign Guide newsletter I write once a week, things that I'm looking at, um, some frameworks and ideas. I'd love to stay in touch with you. It's free. Just sign up. I send it out uh, at once a week. Um, sign up down below for that. Okay, let's jump into what is going on here. Now, in this picture you see right here, you see the Strait of Messina. It's a narrow strip of water separating mainland Italy and the island of Sicily. Now, if you've ever been there, you know it's beautiful. It's, it's, uh, it's magical even. The Strait is best known in history and mythology mainly because of the story of Cilia and Charbides, two deadly monsters that the ancient Greeks feared. Now, Cilia was a six-headed monster with 12 dragon legs and a ring of barking dogs around her waist. <laughs> Kind of crazy. She lived on one side of the strait, but on the other side lived Charbides, a sea monster that created a violent whirlpool capable of sucking down entire ships. Now, navigating the strait was a nightmare for sailors. They were forced to choose between the two, guaranteeing some level of destruction either choice they made. Kind of the rock and the hard place, so to speak. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. But in this case, you probably heard the phrase between Celia and Charbides, meaning to choose between two equally dangerous situations. Well, this is where the phrase comes from. Both Celia and Charbides were meant to serve as reminders of the perils of obsession, of jealousy, and greed. But today, their story serves as a useful metaphor for why companies go woke, even if it means potentially going broke. So let me explain. Recently, a video started going viral on Twitter. Uh, you might have seen it. It reveals why every corporation is actually going woke. Now, the video from The Daily Elevated, it breaks down what's called the Corporate Equality Index, or CEI. Now, the CEI is a tool used by the Human Rights Campaign, or HRC, a political lobbying group. Essentially, um, this index evaluates companies based on their dedication to creating a diverse and inclusive workplace, particularly concerning LBGTQ plus issues. Now, <laughs> this all might sound innocent enough, right? I mean, in fact, many would argue that it's a great initiative aiming to make corporate culture more open and accepting. But here's the thing. It's a political campaign that's masquerading as a human rights foundation. And it requires putting your mission as a company in second place while you pursue a high social credit score. Now, the human rights campaign wields its influence by sending representatives to companies every single year. And they don't just pop by for a friendly visit. No, they come armed with a list of things companies need to implement to maintain or increase their CEI score. Essentially, they're telling corporations what to make visible and public or else or else risk receiving a lower score. And these corporations, they comply. But they aren't trying to get a good score out of the goodness of their hearts. They're forced into it because a lower CEI score can bring about a wave of backlash. Now, woke investor funds may start pressuring the board and activists could begin protesting against the company for perceived outrages. Ad campaigns may get canceled. They might even face sanctions. Now, companies that continue to do business with a penalized company may also face repercussions. If the target CEO isn't woke enough, well, he won't just get pushed out. He'll also get blackballed from working anywhere else in the industry. Same goes for the executives. Now, these corporations, they need a high CEI score and nothing else matters. <laughs> not profits, not the business, 
just that score. But there's a couple problems with this. For starters, it creates a very toxic work culture. Now, Silicon Valley Bank had mega woke policies, including mandatory diversity training of microaggressions. Kind of reminiscent of the Soviet Union. <laughs> you couldn't tell people that things were going bad because the leaders would kill the messengers. <laughs> also, this is speculative. All this makes you wonder if the companies pulling ads from Facebook two years ago and from Twitter last year for reasons of, you know, moderation policies wasn't all part of this trend. It also makes you wonder if this Netflix is suffering from backlash from angering the CEI crowd. Last year, because Netflix ran a Dave Chappelle special that infuriated the transgender folks, Netflix was removed from the HRC's annual corporate equality index, which rates the corporations based on their wokeness. Jay Brown, the HRC's vice president of programs, training and research, revealed that Netflix's score was initially just gonna be reduced by about 25 points. But after after further consideration, they decided that actually suspension from the index completely was actually more appropriate. And guess what happened now? Well, chaos. Rider strikes. The CEO, uh, Reed Hastings, had to step down. Now, is this related? I don't really know. But this is definitely the type of thing that we see when corporations or even countries don't kowtow to the demands of organizations like the HRC. Now, here's where the myth of Celia and Charbidi's comes back in. Companies like Budweiser and Target, they knew that by going ultra woke that they're alienating, you know, the majority, more than half of their customers. But if boycotts are Celia and the CEI score is Tarbides, and then they're much more likely to take it on the chin from Celia. Because although Celia, you know, the customers might be able to take a few sailors, Charbides, the ZI score, can absolutely decimate them. Now to see how, let's just take a look at the nexus of power, how this works. So here's a question for you. What do Disney, Anheuser-Busch, Target, and North Face all have in common? Well, <laughs> their top shareholders happen to be Vanguard Group, BlackRock, and State Street. Oh, funny that. Of course, they're not alone. As a matter of fact, here's a short list of all the companies that are owned at least by one of these three. Now, it's not a short list, but it's the big ones. It's Shell, Zoom, Coca-Cola, Lockheed Martin, Starbucks, PayPal, Netflix, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, MasterCard and Visa, Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, Nestle, Cisco, United Health Group, ExxonMobil, IBM, eBay, and more. Are you starting to get the idea? Now, BlackRock and Vanguard are among the largest and most powerful companies on earth, in part, because they're cantillionaires closest to the money printers. The other part is because it's your money that they're taking and weaponizing against you. Now, even though they have your money and they're fighting against you, you don't wanna get on their bad sides. Consider this clip right here from BlackRock CEO, Larry Fink. Let's play the clip. Well, behaviors are gonna to have to change. And this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors and at BlackRock, we are forcing behaviors. So he says that we have to force behaviors. So these companies don't want to do it, but they have to force them to do it. Now, of course, he's talking about ESG ratings, but it's the same thing. Whether it's CEI, DEI, or ESG, BlackRock is in the business of forcing behaviors because of the power that they willed. Now, when BlackRock says jump, corporate executives have to say how high. But how does all this work? Now, let's say that all this is true. How would it work? Well, here's hypothetically how. BlackRock and these other investment firms could strong-arm corporations into following any agenda they wanted. So first of all, we've seen this over and over, proxy voting. As, as you know, major shareholders, these companies could exercise their voting rights to influence the decision-making process during shareholder meetings. They could use their voting power to elect board members sympathetic to their cause or to pass resolutions that align with their interests, activist shareholders. Now, also, they do that with strategic alliances. So the major shareholders could form strategic alliances among themselves, leveraging their combined voting power to assert influence. By coordinating their efforts and pooling their shares, they could increase their impact on decision-making processes. And then, like I said, shareholder activism. So basically, these entities could then engage in shareholder activism, which would be using their ownership stakes to push for changes within the companies they own. They could propose resolutions, engage in public campaigns, or even use legal means to pressure management and board members to adopt certain measures. 
They could also push investment priorities because the major shareholders could use their influence to shape the investment priorities of the companies they own. By allocating resources towards specific projects or industries, they could indirectly advance their shared agenda, like taking over Exxon and making them divest from oil. Kind of weird. They can also do it through interlocking dictorates. These entities could establish interlocking dictorates where individuals from one company serve on the boards of other companies. Now, this practice can create networks of influence and facilitate coordination among companies owned by these major shareholders. Sort of like a conspiracy. Yeah. Uh, also, they could do it through lobbying and advocacy. Of course, outside of their ownership stakes, these entities could engage in lobbying efforts to shape government policies and regulators. They could do, you know, influencing over the external environment. They could indirectly affect the operations and outcomes of the companies they own. Now, the irony in all of this is that most Americans are helping pay for it. BlackRock's clients include pension funds, endowments, foundations, financial advisors, and of course, individual investors like you. When activists seek, you know, protection and uh, rights, they're often talking about the government becoming the bouncer between them and their critics. They wish for an immunity shield against skepticism, a luxury that nobody has. But ultimately, look, this isn't about LGBT issues at all. Now, don't be surprised if you end up finding out that a score like this one is influencing local politics, state issues, and even your kids' schools. I think we all know, we can all see where this is headed. It's about ushering in a social credit score that manages every aspect of your existence. You see? You see where it's going? Now, this is the first step. It's the easiest way to do that, and it's to do that by creating a divided, low-trust society that's ripe for control and change. So all that sounds great, right? <laughs> or no, it sounds bad, right? <laughs> And it is. So how do we starve the beast? How do we stop this? So yes, right. the woke companies are seeing a lot of pushback, and that's a good thing. But boycotts, they won't be enough to starve the beast because they don't care about the profits. So boycott all you want, that's not really going to do it. What we have to do is we have to create parallel systems that refuse to play by their rules. We have to step up and create businesses. Obviously, you know, I already think Bitcoin is a big role in that. We have to have the freedom to transact to have any other freedoms, but there's other options too. Like, so take, for example, this new website called redballoon.work. Now, these guys, they're not a sponsor. I've never even actually talked to them. I don't know anything about their team, but their mission is clear. And it's actually kind of normal, surprisingly sane. Basically, their motto is a uh, united people who value freedom, hard work, and merit. Hmm. Sounds so normal. It's companies like this that are going to help us starve the beast. They're going to push back against the social credit score system. And like I always say, it only takes a small minority to turn the tide. So it depends on you. It depends on me. We have to step up. We have to participate in the greatest opportunity I've ever seen for entrepreneurs to set up these parallel businesses. Literally, you can just take any idea like a job board, like Red Balloon, and then make it common sense a freedom-based version of it. And as consumers, then we have to step up and support these businesses. That's our challenge. Now, going away, hiding out on a mountaintop, going, living on a ranch, you know, out of the country, it's not gonna save the world. But through our economic voting, we certainly can. That's my goal, what's yours? Let me know down in the comments down below, are you gonna step up when we need you? Or are you gonna go hide out on the hill? All right, let me know in the comments down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. That's okay. I'm trying different formats. Let me know what you think about this. Sit at the desk, different content. I'd love to hear from you. Of course, subscribe to this channel if you're not already. And that's what I got to your success. I'm out.